Well, I think that most of you know that I grew up Catholic. And when I was in elementary school, I was an altar boy. How many former altar boys do we have here today? Okay, a few of you. All right. When I was an altar boy, it was back in the day where people did not receive communion in their hand, but directly on their tongue. And so we altar boys, we had a really important job. We had to hold what was called a patent, which is a gold plate under people's chin. Just in case the wafer fell off their tongue, we had to catch it. And if it ever hit the floor, boy, were we in trouble. <laughs> now, if there was any wine left in the chalice after communion, we had to go into the sacristy behind the church and we had to pour it in a special sink, in a special drain. Now, all of this happened because in the Catholic Church, there is the belief that during the consecration of the bread and the wine, that the bread and the wine actually become the body and blood of Christ. Now, we here at Douglas UCC, I love that we celebrate communion each and every Sunday. But for us, it is a symbolic ritual. Rituals are very important. Rituals are sacred. Rituals are reminders, sacred reminders. What we're doing each and every Sunday when we eat the bread and drink the wine is we are reminding ourselves that the substance of God that the life of the Christ dwells with us and within us. Now, I share this with you today because, of course, in today's gospel, Jesus speaks of the bread of life. Anyone who eats that bread gets to live forever. So I want that bread. Where do I get it? How do I find it? Well, I think it's important that we start at the beginning of this story. And this story actually began two Sundays ago, if you were here, where Jesus multiplied the bread and the fish. If you remember, he had five loaves of bread and two fish and multiplied them to feed 5,000 people. But remember what happened after that. He fled. He escaped because the crowds wanted to make him king. So he got in a boat and he went to the other side. But the people followed him there. And he said to them, You came looking for me because I filled your stomachs and for free. And he tells them, do not work for food that is perishable. Instead, strive for food that is eternal. Jesus was trying to remind them, and we're reminded each week when we eat the bread and drink the wine, that we are more than just human. We are more than just physical beings. We are spiritual beings. And Jesus wanted to make sure that we feed our spirit with spiritual food. Now, I know a lot of people who do a really good job of taking care of their physical bodies, and that's great. They go to the gym, and they eat pure, clean, organic food. That's great. But I know some of those very same people who feed each day on mental junk food. They are people who multiple times a day feed on thoughts of worry and fear and anxiety and resentment and anger and jealousy and lack and limitation. So while they may be physically healthy, their spirits are not healthy. Most people think that they're physical beings and that they have spiritual experiences from time to time. But that is not the truth. Jesus came to tell us, you are eternal spiritual beings. You're just having a temporary physical experience. This is just temporary no matter how well you take care of your body, it's going to die. Everybody's body here is going to die. 
So Jesus is trying to say, why are you feeding that? Feed the Spirit, because that's the one that's going to live forever. And he tells us about this bread, this bread of life. Now, bread is mentioned more than 40 times in the Bible, and it is a symbol. It's not literal, it's a symbol. So as we heard this morning, Robert read for us the Old Testament reading from Kings, in which we hear that this is the bread that sustained Elijah for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness. And this is the same bread, the manna from heaven, which sustained the Israelites during their 40 years in the wilderness. And it's the bread Jesus speaks of today, that if we eat of it, we'll never die. So I want this bread. Where do I get it? How do I find it? Well, of course, Jesus and the Scripture writers were not talking literally. It's not literal bread. It's spiritual bread. We hear in all of the stories about bread that the bread comes from heaven. So where is heaven? Is it up in the sky? Is the bread going to come floating down from the clouds? Well, I told you this once before, and I want to repeat it because I think it's important for you to know this. Not one time in the Gospels, not once did Jesus ever say that heaven was a place up in the sky. What did he say? He said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is here and now. And he said, the kingdom of heaven is within you. That's where the bread is. It's within you. You're trying to look around you and be fulfilled by all these outer things. Where the bread is within you and it's here and now. Jesus was pointing the direction to where we can get this bread. The spiritual writer Eckhart Tolle says, Stop looking outside of yourself for scraps of pleasure or fulfillment, for within you is a treasure that is greater than anything the world can provide. That is the truth. And that's why Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom, and then everything else will be added. How do we enter into the kingdom? How? Through prayer and meditation. It is why Sister Joyce Rupp, in our words of integration and guidance this morning, said, unless you are rooted in a daily personal prayer practice, you will never be spiritually nourished. How are you going to get this bread if you don't pray and meditate. In prayer and meditation, we enter into the kingdom where we find that daily bread. We get to feast on that daily bread. And we are partaking in communion. The word communion in Latin means with union. What we are doing when we pray and meditate is we are uniting with God. We are becoming one with God. Now, our Jewish brothers and sisters have a bread, a beautiful bread that symbolizes this union. It's that beautiful challah bread, that beautiful braided bread. And that's why it's braided, to symbolize our union with God. Now, Jesus used another bread analogy, you may remember, when he was describing the kingdom of heaven. He said the kingdom of heaven is like yeast in bread. You know yeast is so tiny, but it's inside the bread, and what does it do? It's an activating agent that makes the bread rise. So when we enter into the kingdom, we connect with that activating agent that is within us, that grace, that light, whatever you want to call it, but it makes us rise. It lifts our spirits we, we are raised in consciousness. That's what we're doing in prayer and meditation. We are uniting. Which brings me back to Jesus fleeing the crowds. Jesus fled the crowds because they wanted to make him a king. 
And he didn't want to be a king. He didn't want to be worshipped. Because for Jesus, his teachings weren't about him. They were always about us. You pray and meditate so that you can become living bread. You. And I know a lot of people say, no, Jesus is the bread, not me. In John's Gospel, which we've been reading from the past few weeks, Jesus gives seven I am statements. I've spoken to you before about the number seven. But he gives seven I am statements. So yes, I am the bread, but so are you. Jesus said, I am the Son of God. But he also said, you too are sons and daughters of God. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. But he also said, you too are the light of the world. Do you understand that Jesus didn't want us to worship him? He wanted us to understand that within us is that same divine spark, that Christ. So I'm going to tell you something that may be confusing for you, but it is a very key teaching that I would like you to get. When Jesus says, I am, he is not talking about himself. He's not talking about the man from Nazareth, the guy with the beard and the sandals. I am is the Christ consciousness, the divine consciousness, the God consciousness that's within each and every one of us. That's what he meant by I am. Do you remember when Moses was speaking to the burning bush, the voice of God, And Moses says, what's your name? And God answers, I am who I am. That's the great I am. So all those I am statements aren't about Jesus. They're about the great I am. Scripture says that when we pray and meditate, what does it say? Be still and know The I am. That's where it is. And when we enter into that kingdom and we connect with that I am, we braid the I, the small self, the human self, we braid that with the divine self. We unite. Now when Jesus says in this gospel reading, I will raise you up on the last day. He's not talking about the day that your physical body dies. He's not. He's talking about the death that happens when the small self unites with the divine self. The small self is crucified and the divine self is resurrected. And that happens each and every time we enter the kingdom. Each and every time we pray and meditate, that's what happens. That's what Jesus was trying to explain to us. So what I would like to encourage all of you to do this week is to find time each and every day to enter the kingdom. Develop a personal prayer practice where you can get still and quiet and go within. Be still and know the I am. Feed on that daily bread. Rise up. Lift up your spirit and your consciousness. And you're not doing that just for you. You're doing that so that you can become living bread for the world. So that you can leave the meditation chair and go out into the world and feed others. As we know, the world is so spiritually malnourished right now. It is our role as Christians to go and feed others, to lift their spirits, and to show them that they have the sustenance and the life of Christ within them. Namaste.